Hello and welcome to JSON path tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about the JSON path operators. So in last tutorial, we had understood about the JSON path notation and there are two types of notation dot and bracket notation. If you haven't seen the previous tutorial, please go and watch it before you continue with further with this tutorial. So in this tutorial, we are going to understand some of the key JSON path operators that are very frequently used. So the first operator that we are going to discuss is the root node, right? So in previous tutorial as well, I have covered uh, an example which had the root node or the dollar sign. So dollar denotes the root number, root member of the JSON structure. Okay, so it's, it denotes the root node or root member of any JSON file that you are getting or JSON document or the response. Say for example, in the sample JSON that you see here, that the, the curly brace at the top is basically when we say dollar, we are denoting the root node or the curly brace at the top. And then say here, so for example, dollar dot data dot GID, which is basically what it will fetch is it will start dollars is basically starting at the curly brace and then dot data is coming to the child node which is which is which is the data right and then because data is an array then we have to specify the index of the array it has five elements here or five objects here right so we have to specify the the index or the location of the the dictionary or the object with, with for which we are going to access the child node so here we are interested in accessing GID for the first node. That's why we have specified zero as an index and then dot notation again to access a child GID. Okay, so dollar denotes the root node and then at the rate denotes the current node. Okay, so when we say at the rate, we are basically saying where, wherever, whatever, criteria we specify so for example in this example here when we say dollar dot data then we are saying dollar is the root node dot data we are at the data at the child node and then in the square bracket instead of specifying the actual number or actual index number we are basically searching based on certain criteria okay and for that criteria we are utilizing the current node or the at the rate sign so when we say at the rate, right, we are specifying, we can specify the name, whichever is present in that particular node. And then we can specify the criteria that based on this node, you give me the specific nodes. For example, here, uh, it, it will search for the name, which has the value as RCV Academy test project and return this third value okay so it will return the whole data that is present here so the dictionary here or the object so it will return gid name and resource so it will return the whole object based on this search criteria so at denotes the current node then there is a wild card which is the star sign and star sign returns all the elements within specified scope so for example you are looking for all the elements within this data um, array then you just say dollar dot data star and will return all the elements within this particular array then dot is to fetch the child node that we have already seen that you are starting with the root node and then dot notation if you're using the dot notation it, it will be um, used to fetch the next node which is the child node which is dot data and then again dot gid which will fetch the child node of this particular element so dot is used to fetch the child node then there is a question mark which is to query all items that meet certain search criteria which we have already seen here in this example if you can see that we start with a question mark which is basically saying that we want to search the all the file or the elements in the file based on certain criteria and where, that's why we have used question mark and the current node so at the road at the rate dot name or dot resource type or dot GID depending on what values you want to search with you just provide with the at the rate dot name 
or dot GID and provide the criteria. Then we have the subscript or operator, which is nothing but it denotes the child element of the current element by the name or index. So here you can see we have searched the node by the name and here we have searched the node by the index. Okay, we have specified the node, uh, the index zero to get the detail of this particular node. Now let's go ahead and see all these examples in the evaluator. Okay, so we'll go to the JSON path online evaluator. Okay, so the first thing is basically to fetch the root node. Okay, so if I just say dollar, you will see it has fetched the whole node okay the whole file here so that's the root node with the dot notation if i say data it will pull everything inside it unless and until we specify the index of the value that we are looking for okay so if i say zero it will fetch the dictionary or object that is at the index zero if you want different index two or three it will fetch the details accordingly now once you have got your specified object or dictionary and you want a sub element of it or the child element within it you again use the dot notation to access the child element and provide any item or any name that is within this particular dictionary or object so for example i want name it will pull the name i want gid it will pull gid and if I want resource type, I'll just put resource type and it will put uh, pull resource type value in the evaluation results. Now you can use the same details and go back to SOAP UI and use the same expression, JSON path expression and see the result in SOAP UI. So the next query, which is very important to understand, we'll use the second one in the online evaluator. So here, I want to use the second query here. So here, what I'm doing is I am searching the, the data or the node based on certain criteria. Okay, so search criteria. So let me write it down rather than copying and pasting. So I'm at the root node and then the data. Now I want to search based on certain criteria. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll start with the square bracket. Instead of specifying the index of the node, what I'll do is I'll say question mark. I want to search based on certain criteria and then the bracket and at the rate so at the rate is the current node so i want to specify the current node and then dot based on whatever node you want to specify so for example i want to specify name so i'll say name and then provide the value okay so what whatever name you're looking for so so for example you are looking for rcv um, academy test project close the quotes and then close the braces and close the square brackets so now you can see i have searched the node with a certain criteria so i have used a question mark and then the current node specifying the current node name and providing the value whatever the value is there in the name and then it has provided me the evaluation result now what is the advantage of using this um, search criteria is because say for example you are getting response uh, or dynamic response and these values right so for example in the data at in one response there are say five projects and second time you query there are 10 projects and you don't know what order these this data will come through right so there is a one item in this response for example gid for each project which is fixed but you don't know the order so instead of specifying the actual index say 0 1 2 3 4 uh, the order might change uh, so what you can do is you can just specify the name and it doesn't matter where this particular uh, object is in the response it will still be able to fetch the the value of the node 
So within this response, if you want to get more details, for example, you are looking for GID, you will still be able to find the GID for that particular node, even though you don't know at which index this particular node will come in the next response that you will trigger in the next request that you will trigger okay so that's the advantage of using the search criteria so i hope i have covered most of the um, options here in json path operators so that's pretty much about the json path operator hope you like the tutorial please do share and subscribe and thank you for watching